What is going on everybody? Vex30 here for a new type of video on this channel. It's something very different than what I've ever done. I've never done something like this before. It has been done in Paladins before, um, but this type of video with this has not been done before. Today, we are working with the Toby eye tracking system. Now, this Toby eye tracker was something I've been looking at for a while and something I've wanted to do. I think eye tracking helps you improve as a player, at least for me. Um, this is a big investment to try to help you with playing. Uh, this is really something for the higher levels of play, in my opinion, uh, after you get there and you made it to help you improve and refine your gameplay. But something I'm going to do with this eye tracker are do videos where I reflect, self-improve, self-reflect, self-criticize, self just improve in general watching a vod of me playing with the eye tracker now this is what this video will be right now you can tell on screen i have my uh windows video player up um i'm not too sure how else to do this right now maybe it will improve it in the future but we're gonna watch this vod or video two to get together of me playing with the eye tracker and i'm gonna go over what i'm doing probably what i'm thinking what i'm looking at we're gonna rewind some parts and rewatch. I want to point out things I did right, things I did wrong, things I could do better, things, everything. We're just going to watch it together, self-improve, self-criticize, and just help help me help you, you know? I'm going to help myself and try to improve, and I'm sure it's going to help you. So let's just jump right into it. So starting, of course, we go Spirits Chosen. This is our main build. I will rewind that actually just a little bit because I went really fast, but... This is the, oh my goodness, I go so fast. Eerie Presence 3, Possession 4, Ritual Magic 1, so Spirits 5, and Many Gourds 2. That's my main build for Damba. It's why I run every single time. So we're going to use this time to explain this eye tracker. You can watch this yellow circle on the screen. You can see what I'm looking at. I kind of like show it off there. I look at different places on the screen. Looking at the Lian. It's not exactly perfect. It is almost perfect though. Um, one thing you notice as the video goes on. My eyes aren't typically looking at my crosshair. You shouldn't be really looking at your crosshair, especially as a support. Your eyes should be everywhere. On your on your cooldowns, on your top left UI, to look at um, your teammate's health. Here, I rebind my uh, spray key because I really don't want to be spraying. I just rebound it for a little bit, kind of was spraying on a spraying spray. I, I was trying to press escape to do it, but I rebound it to my right arrow again. So, all right, we go ahead and buy an item here. Let's go and remove the bottom bar. So we're pushing a point. We're kind of watching where they come from. So right there, we kind of see two or three go on the left side. We top off our DPS, give them a little bit of speed to help them. Uh, we're looking at the Makoa, looking at a little bit of spam damage, using, trying to use our... Oh, I forgot we lag here. We lag here for just a second. And that kind of hurt us in the point fight. We immediately go for the heal on Makoa because we're kind of like panicking because we're lagging. We missed the heal on Zen. He dodged it out a little bit, but we missed it. Um, top off the land. We're gonna get a gourd here on the corner to try to help the Imani, help our Makoa as well. We're looking for a little bit of spam damage. So Makoa pulled our Makoa out of my line of sight, so we missed the heal there. Gourd on the statue. We're just kind of playing it slow right now. We're staying on our statue. We're very careful. We need to be more careful here though, because we can be flanked from the left at any point. We gourd the corner here so our team can fall back to it and I can use it. And I go ahead and completely fall back. I know my left isn't safe. Ah, we tried to save the Makoa there, but there was really nothing more we can do for him. Right there, I want to point out something I did right there that I should not be doing there and I should be doing before the game. Right here, kill the Makoa. I hit a stun and I'm like, wait, let's look at their legendaries. Totem Grok. I should be looking at this before the game. I don't know why I'm looking at it after it happened, but if I looked at it before the game, maybe I play a little bit differently. So make sure you know what legendaries the other <laughs> or talents the other team is using. Right here, I see what they're using. I'm like, oh. That makes sense. Now, right here, I get flanked from the left. Um, we're panicked to the right. Now we're kind of in a bad position. We hit a stun to slow them down, but we end up getting pushed here, I think, from Makoa. We couldn't save our land there. We just had a cooldown coming up. Makoa pushes us. I maybe could have dodged to the right, but I was thinking staying to the left, he would make a miss. Uh, it was kind of a weird dodge I did there, but it's all right. So let's go ahead and skip through this, go back to the defense. Uh, coming out of spawn, we're kind of looking where our teammates are, see who's dead in the enemy team. We see our Makoa's low, we see our Amani low. We were going to go for the Amani, but she died, so we switch back to the Makoa. Great ult by the Zen, and we just start spamming damage. All the time you should be shooting on Damba, if there's people close. 
Uh, you should also be constantly looking for stuns. Since I know they're Totem Grok, I spam a lot more this game rather than spamming stuns. I spam my auto attacks. We're just looking to heal people off a of cooldown right now. Um, right there, I think we saw him. Let's let's make a point of this. We should be more aware to the far right. I think it was about right... No, we didn't see it. Okay, you'll see it here just a second. We start getting spammed from behind. We're like, whoa, what is happening? We're in a terrible position now. We put ourselves in the open. I don't know why I was there. Look, look at this. I had terrible positioning here. I should have sat behind this rock or behind the wall. Look at me, I'm in the open, the enemy team. The McCoy shields me, great shield, but I was in a bad position there. I should have been behind the rock. We go ahead and try to fall back here because they grok ulted. We fear off the land, which is a great kill. A uh, great pick on the land off that fear. We just keep falling back, watch out for that gen assault. <laughs> there I didn't mean to emote, I was really trying to use VGS to say Koga's on point. Heal up the Makoa. Kinda got stuck in them for a second. We're just kind of falling back, Makoa's gonna go for us, there he is. We'll go ahead and spam damage on him. We're just trying to get alt charge and stay alive. We're in our gourd that whole time, so we're good. Right there, we put the heal on Nimani, thinking we're going to save her. Like, oh, we saved her. Oh, she got killed by Lian. It happens. Uh, we fall back here. I kind of know at this point I'm dead. So right here, important to note, um, a lot of people, when they're about to die, they just emote. They just spray. They're like, oh, I'm dead. It doesn't matter. Watch my alt charge, okay? This happens multiple times this game, so please take note of this. Watch my ult charge, okay? 67, 73. I went from 60, what was it, 63 or 67? 63 to 80, no, 67 to 80%. I gained 13 ult charge by just trying to get my ult as I was dying. So we gained 13%, and that's huge. Getting your ult very fast is always big. So whenever you're gonna die, don't just sit there and emote, don't waste your time. Actually, try to be productive. Use your time effectively. We see the Makoa's low. We go straight for him with a ton of vision on him, which is fine. We jump peek him there so we don't take too much damage. We're looking for the spam there on that corridor. Force Makoa to fall back. We're kind of pre-pocketing our Makoa there. We don't really see our Zen low, which we should have. We should have put a heal in the Zen here at some point. Where Makoa's kind of going in, and oh my goodness, does he almost die here. We top him off though. We let him use that gourd, and we top him off very quickly, honestly. So that was really good. Amani with the root. Really good root on Makoa forces out his shield. Uh, we try to find a live sign on that Zen. So right here I'd like to make a note. So one thing when you're tunnel visioning like I just did. Watch. See the Zen. I see the Zen. And I'm pre-aiming where he's going to be. Okay. So I'm tunnel visioned. I know I'm tunnel visioned. So immediately my eyes go to the top left to see who's low. Because I am tunnel visioned. I look who's low. I see Leanne is low. Immediately after, I look for the Leanne and I find the Leanne. And I try to get a heal on her and I got the Gourd on her. So I know she's okay. So when you're tunnel visioning like that, and I knew I was, I look to the top left and say, who is low? Who can I help? I realize who I can help and I immediately look for them. Help with the Leanne. I do make a mistake right there. Ah, oh, that was that was a bad mistake. Should not be doing that. Bad heal, heal prioritization. There we can see the Leanne is low on the right. Makoa is low on the left. Makoa has a giant health pool because he is a tank. There is no reason to heal him here. He will be okay for that extra two seconds. Leanne is the one in danger right now. I should be healing the Leanne first before the Makoa. It was a mistake, and we probably ended up losing the defense with it. Immediately I look at her like, oh, I messed up. As you see, I'm just going to try to spam. Oh, <laughs> and another thing, if you just didn't notice that, I didn't look at it. But our Zid, look at the Zid. Look at where he's at it right now here on the right side. We'll rewatch it one more time. It was so funny. Watch him on the right side. Boom! Alt's off the map. And I'm like, look at him. I'm like, what? How did he do that? All right, we go ahead and line of sight from the Makoa hook. Make sure we don't get hooked. Good hook, Makoa. We go ahead and try to just peel for a Makoa. It really wasn't worth, but we forced off the Grok ult. So that ult was questionable. Okay, right here, I'd like to make a note. Again, watch my alt charge, okay? We lost the point. I could go in base and just waste my time in there emoting. But instead, we're at 9% and I gored out on the point. Ready? 10%. 10%. And it's just in slow-mo. 10% to 24%. We gained 14% ult charge off of one gourd thrown on the point instead of emoting in base. Min, max, everything. Now, if you dove out there and just did damage, of course you can get some more ult charge, but you're gonna be feeding credits to the enemy team because when you die, you feed credits. It's how the game works. So you shouldn't be doing that. Instead, I use my Gourd to stay alive and farm 40% ult charge just to min-max. 
we go ahead and buy Kronos too. Um, actually, the eye tracker at work here, just kind of like looking at everything, watching my surroundings, you know, just kind of like showing it off, looking at characters. It's really nice. This eye tracker is great. I record myself uh, point of views all the time and rewatch them, kind of like in scrims and just normal games. And rewatching them, I actually learn a lot from it. All right, let's go ahead and skip through this. No reason to watch this. It's just kind of showing off the eye tracking software. All right, so again, we look at chat for a second. We look at our teammates. We see they're coming to the right. We saw them through the wall or like around the wall. We saw their horse and huge genos on our Makoa. Their Makoa alts and we're falling back right here. I understand right now as a player, Look what's in front of me. I have a Makoa ulting, a Grok hitting me, and a Lan possibly about to shoot me. I decide this is it. Points over. Why try to stay alive? And I run at this Makoa and just try to frag him. Like, I just get some alt charge and put out some damage. We know we lost it, so die. If you're going to lose, just die. It's obvious when you're going to lose. It's important so you don't stagger yourself. Heal the Makoa there. Now, this is another note I'd like to make. I see the Zen is low. And there is a possibility that if I dash to the front right, I could save him. But if I do dash front right, I won't have line of sight on him. One thing I'm working on myself is conserving my dashes more often. So here I decide, let's not dash. Let's see if he stays alive. And let's save it just in case something happens. Then right after dies. We realize where he died. If you look to the left here, we, whoops, whoops. I went up 30. Oh gosh. Whoops, 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 whoops. How far did we go up? Spoilers. Um, but we see this in, and I want to pause right here. We realized we wouldn't have line of sight on him anyway, so it was a good choice. That was just map awareness, knowing what I see on the map. Now, right here, let's see how this point plays out. We kill our Makoa. We see the Makoa has shield up. We're kind of just line of sighting everything on the statue, letting our team do the work. Again, as a support, all you do is enable your teammates to carry, you know? Supports never carry, they, all they do is enable. And if you're good at enabling, then you're good at helping your team carry you, you know what I mean? It's just how it is a support. That was kind of a wasted gourd there on the right side. I don't know why I threw it. I saw the Leanne, I was like, ah, might as well give her extra healing. Easy point uh, retake, and we had comeback, so we capped very fast. Uh, we're kind of just chilling on payload. We see the Koga spamming us. Right here, we see the Makoa going in. Now, I have two choices here. One, dash forward to our Makoa and save him, right? Through the stairs or just stay here, push payload and then reset. I decide right here, I might wanna go for him. See, he's gonna die, I back up. I kinda hesitated there. I should've just made a decision again. I knew I didn't need my gourd, so I threw the gourd there to kinda farm some damage, farm some credits. Again, good gourd, good usage of the cooldown to farm credits, min-maxing everything. I knew I wasn't gonna need a great route right here. I fear, and then the totem goes off. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? A wasted fear because of a good Grok totem. But our Makoa makes an amazing play with this ultimate. Goes in, goes ham, we kill two, we kill three, and then we ended up, I think, finishing a fourth. Yeah, great play by the Makoa. Made great space with that ultimate and helped us really enable us to push forward. I'm kind of watching top left because we don't know where the Koga is yet. We think our, yeah, we just saw him there. So we're all good. Koa's there. We kind of want to push up to help him. We don't want to leave payload though. He'll be fine. I go ahead and gourd back. I wanted him to fall back. That's why I gourded there. Like I'm telling him, come back. Leanne walks right into that ultimate. I guess she didn't see it. And here Grok ults. Makoa just holds W on us. We try to dodge the hook. We're not dodging that hook and we die. Great Grok ult. Nothing you can do about that. Let's skip forward. Coming out of base again. We pocket in a Rakoa because he's our tank. You know, he's gonna take the most damage, so we're pre-pocketing him, giving him movement speed, trying to get him to the fight. He jumps over our heal there. We know Makoa's on the left side. We're trying to help our Amani the best we can, and we just avoid that Makoa all together. We go to the middle, we help our Makoa, we help our Leanne, trying to ignore their Makoa, still trying to keep an eye on him. We hear him roll, and we go ahead and see him there on the left. We top off our Zen. Good awareness there to get that Zen, Zen heal. As you can see, as this game progresses, my eyes are being more active. I'm looking top left all the time. I'm looking all around. This is my first game of the day, honestly. And like first game of the days, I feel like I should be ready to play. So I feel like analyzing first games of the day is actually good for me. But we go ahead and gourd up on the Makoa there. Top off our Zen and Billow. Billow means he's out of Cauter, which is great. Oh, that was so unfortunate. I want to rewatch that and see if it was my fault or Makoa's fault. Technically, it's not Makoa's fault. It's just 
bad timing. So we'll heal the <laughs> heal the Zen. I look to see our lands low and do we heal we heal right here. Yeah, we're using the cooldown right now. Our Makoa didn't really block it. I think I was just slow on getting my crosshair over to the land. And she ends up dying. I think she dies there anyway without the heal, but that's kind of a missed heal. Makoa rolled to it. It's all around my fault. Unfortunate timing as just a bad heal. Go ahead and go to the corner. We go for the heal on Makoa and he gets lifted as we're healing. He can't touch because he's lifted. What are you gonna do about it? You know? It's just a it's it's a failed push, but we do have comeback mechanic again. So it's okay. I'm just kind of looking around here. Let's go ahead and skip through this. We, we're looking at all charges here, so that's important to do. We're near base. Look at look at the tracker. Ready, right here. I look through and I see Makoa's ult, Amani's close, Leanne has, Zin is close, and of course I have ult. So I look through all those and like, okay, we have a chance here. We have ultimates. <laughs> I saw Makoa. Screw CC. All right, skip through this. Skip through this, and here we go. Point fight. We go ahead and watch the corridor then we saw makoa go right we saw another go right as well for pocket and makoa we are fairly certain everybody's on the right but we're taking a very safe angle here all right we see our team is moving forward and we're kind of keeping ourselves angled within the team we're waiting for that totem to go down we see the totem go down we wait a second and then we throw the fear we fear out that makoa amani and zen kill the makoa our makoa kills the genos great plays all around we timed that totem perfectly great plays everybody I tell Leon I'm gonna attack. Can you just go? Go, I got it. Go, go, Leon. Get out of here. Scat. Scat, you little, you little, you little silly. Um, I see the Zen. I can't really help him. We go ahead and gourd ourselves here. Now, I want to talk about that gourd. When I first watched through this, I thought that was a wasted gourd, but I think it's smart. I know that they are gonna be touching soon, and I do want to stay on the point, and I want to try to get a stun while they come in to stop them from touching or body block them. The Gord ends up being okay, but it, it doesn't help me here, but it could help me. Uh, we see a land coming in. We're looking for the stun. We see the Makoas also. It's at 97%. There's no way they're touching. We try to dash out, but the payload spawns. We're like, oh, huh, whoops. We go to ourselves in the corner, and here comes almighty Koga players coming in. Just look at him rutted like this. I just, oh, Koga's something else right now. Look at this. He's just rutting forward. Oh, it's so funny. Koga's something else. We see our Makoa die. We try to save our Amani here. We get as much healing as we can on her, but I, there was no saving her. We know he already used Hook, so we're safer there, but we'll go ahead and kite back so we didn't, don't take too much damage. And now we're hoping our team starts to aggress here soon. Right there, I missed the heal on Leanne. Um, it was a combination of her being slowed and me missing, and me being slowed. It just kind of threw me off. We killed Totem super fast there. I didn't note we bought Bulldozer 3. Now, Bulldozer 3 is a little bit ineffective. Um, we should have probably bought Bulldozer 2. But I kind of rage bought Bulldozer because I was sick of that totem. <laughs> so, you know, that was a little bit of mid-max I missed. Koga's on the right. Amani throws her fire form, and Koga actually doesn't fight that. I was kind of surprised. I thought Amani was dead for sure. We'll go ahead and line aside their team, dash for our team. Gotta play safe, kill the totem. We're gonna be constantly looking to kill that totem the rest of the game. We're trying to get our Makoa to hold fo go forward. So we're double pocketing him. Look for the totem. Yet again, we hit it once, make it one shot for our team. We gored up for the Makoa. Again, we're trying to get our team to play aggressive. Great dash in by Leanne. Great ultimate. We dodge at ult from there, Leanne. And our Leanne made a great play there getting in there and just being super aggressive. Great plays all around by our team. We end up trading uh, Leanne for Koga ult, and our Leanne killed somebody, so she's already at 76%. Amazing job by her. Great aggressive play. We try to get a line of sight on that Ko Makoa. I actually want to rewatch that. How close are we to hitting him here? And could we have hit him? Right here. We are very close. If we if we healed a millisecond earlier when we were just about right here, there's a little bit of sight on him that I could have healed, but I just it, it's a tough heal. We missed it. That's why you're a presence. Sometimes as a support you go for tough heal tough heals just like there. That's why you run eerie presence. You have to go for tough heals at times, keep people alive. Now we go ahead, we know we missed hook. We're pretty safe here. We dash up to the high ground to play safe. We gored over there for the Zen, but the Zen's like, nah, sorry, dude. I'm just going to go over here. I was like, okay. Leanne goes ahead and uses that cord. Top over Makoa. Look for the totem. Find the totem. Got good damage on it. Can't really kill the Makoa yet. Leanne ate it. Our Makoa's alt, though, so we're going to go ahead and focus on our DPS. Now, right here was crazy. We kill the Makoa, and then out of nowhere, after we kill the Leanne, we just see a Geno Salt come from the back left of us. That was crazy. 
As a player, you're like, why is Gentles flanking? And from here, I want to make a note. I know we killed the Lian. I know Grok died. I know we just lost Amani and we lost Lian earlier. But we're at a 3-3. But the point score is 2-3. I could fear this Koga here. Their Mako is still alive, though. I don't know his health. I don't know any of their health besides Koga. I have the option to fear in front of me and fear off this Koga, but the point is 2-3. We're going to have comeback mechanic on the next point, and having ult economy and having more ults is important on a point fight. So we go ahead and accept it. We take the death. It hurt to do it, but we, it just, having ult for the next point fight is important, you know? Saving KD isn't always is what you should do. Our Zen ults, I kind of look up, it's like, huh? Again, I looked at everybody, ult, everybody's ult there. We grab Haven instead of Nimble, just because they're all Haven damage, uh, except for like the Grok Shock Pulses, which I think are Blast. Could be. But, yeah, our, our Zen accidentally pushed the, he didn't ult though. It didn't end up going off. So let's move forward here. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and follow our Mako in. We're gonna follow him and he stops. We're like, oh, okay, we'll stop too. You're gonna gonna come forward. I was gonna heal that Zen, but I want to double pocket Makoa because I think he's gonna get going forward here in a second. Yeah, there he goes. Heal our Leannon. Our pre pockets wore off by then, but we're gonna heal him. Cole, we see that the dragon is making plays here. One thing I am very aware of now is I see our Zen right here, and I see exactly what he wants to do is push forward and flank them. What I do is give him a pre-pocket for the movement speed, board up to the Makoa, and I chill. Now here, I know that Zen is now behind him. I can see in my peripherals that he is. Okay, I see the totem. I kill the totem. I wait a second. Now what I did here, let me note. I see the totem. I kill the totem. Totem usually lasts for like one or two seconds afterwards. So I give it a second. I fear, and I hold the fear till the very last second, and I fear the Leanne. Now, I know Zin's behind them, and I know Zin can make a play. He's half elf, but he can make a play on that Leanne and try to kill her. Now, let's watch. <laughs> Zin either right here has to reload or deflex. I can't tell. It looks like a reload, but I couldn't tell. Our Leanne is low behind us, which we could have healed instead of making that play. We missed the snake there. We end up healing up our Makoa just enough. We're at 96%. I couldn't heal the Imani there anymore. We kind of stay with our Makoa to stay safe. We fall back into this corner. We just hug the corner there so we don't get Leanne ulted. We know we can stay alive here. Koga chases us. We have teammates to help us. We just kind of chill. We go ahead and go for the retake. That's hook down. So we go ahead and wide peek this and kind of kill the totem. Pull some attention. Imani's root hits the tree, but it forces the shield, which is great. So it ends up being a really good uh, ice ball. Put some damage there on Makoa. Heal up our Makoa. Good plays all around. Heal up our Imani. Get the Gord up. Lian goes for the same plane. Kills their Lian, but ends up dying for it this time. We kill the Totem there. Try to tave our Makoa, but he's so close. If we could just kill this Grok, we could possibly win this. We couldn't kill the Grok. We lost three. I'm like, oh, this might be over. I'm going to go ahead and get to the corner here. I kind of gave it up at this point. I missed the stun here on Koga. Pretty lazy of me, but I was like, ah, it's over. I'm just going to go in the corner and die. Our team tries to get in, they stagger in. Makoa comes in, he's like, don't worry guys, I got this. And Rockholt slows him down, and right after his end gets off, that's GG's. Now, this video was of a game I played for the first time of the day. First game of the day, and I believe as a professional player, I should be able to come off the bench and be extremely warm. Um, when you play professionally, when you play at LAN, when you play online, you don't have too much time to warm up, so you have to come off uh, cold. So playing game, these games and reflecting on these games are important. I realize what I need to do more. What I need to do more is really be more active. With looking around left and right, my eyes need to be looking more towards my team UI, their team UI, see who's alive and dead. Like I just have to be, I just have to wake up. Like, that's it. I have to be more active. My eyes need to be more all over the place. I need to be more aware left and right. As games go on and progress during the day, I am more. But this first game is important. I can't start slow. I realize this after watching this game that I am starting a bit slow. So that's something I need to prove on in the future. 
And I hope you learned a lot from this video because this is a video for me to help me help you. I'm helping myself and I hope that helps you. Um, I'm self-reflecting, self-criticizing, and I hope that helps your gameplay. This eye tracker really gives me an idea what I'm looking at and if I really did look at something. Like, uh, sometimes when I'm screaming like, hey, did you look at this? Did you even see this? I'm like, hey, let me go rewatch it. Let me go uh, watch myself and I'll let you know if I did. And I'll tell them, yeah, I did. No, I didn't. Sorry about that. You know, actually, I did look at it. I don't know why this happened. You know, this eye tracker actually helps me a lot as a professional player. Um, it helps me improve. It helps me like criticize and self-reflect and be self-aware. Because sometimes in scrims, somebody tells you, you did this wrong. It's like, no, I didn't. So I try to record my point of views with the eye tracker. So I know when they say, hey, did you do this? I go, hey, I'm going to go rewatch it. I've been watching a lot of my own VODs with this and it's helping so much for me. So I hope this helps you. I hope you enjoyed this new type of video. And I also hope you enjoy your day, night, evening, morning, dawn, dusk, or whatever it is where you live. And I will see you in the next one. Later. And a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Captain Splashcloth, Yosef Slasla, The Witch City Family, Jazzy Cat is Scanning, and all other Patreon supporters. Thank you so much.